Hi folks. Uh, we're going to talk today about the new Caravaggi TRX50 high-speed chipper. Uh, a few years ago, we started carrying, uh, here at Earth Tools, started carrying the Caravaggi Bio 90 chipper shredder, which was the first uh, chipper that we offered. Actually, it's a high-speed chipper more than a chipper shredder. But anyway, it's the first chipper we offered that actually had a top discharge that would blow the material, the chip material into a wheelbarrow, you know, utility trailer, uh, the back of the pickup truck, whatever. Uh, the TRX-50 is something new from Caravaggi. This one's orange, which is the Caravaggi color. We didn't have it colored either for BCS or Gorilla, which are the two walk-behind tractor lines we carry. Uh, but this fits, uh, this one's set up to fit the BCS because the BCS PTO on it. Anyway, what's different about the TRX-50 uh, compared to the Bio-90 is, number one, the chute is orientable. So you loosen up this little clamp and you can actually orient this thing in any direction. Obviously, you wouldn't want to aim it at yourself or your best friend, but you can, uh, you know, you can, you can put it a variety of places depending on where you're working. The end chute here adjusts up and down as well to, to control your overall angle of um, discharge. Just has some lock nuts here that hold it in place. But if they ever get loose, you can tighten them up. Uh, but anyway, once you get this thing oriented where you want it, you just clamp that back down. Now, the TRX-50 is not a very big machine, um, and it's not designed for great big tractors. Now, we're running it on a BCS 749, which is fine to run it on a tractor bigger than it needs to be. That is, this 13 horsepower engine will just loaf running this little thing. But this is actually a high-speed chipper that can be run on anything as little as 8 horsepower. So if you have an 8 horsepower walk-behind tractor, BCS or Grillo, we now have a high-speed chipper option that will work for you and discharge you know, at a higher point rather than being a, a, the typical chipper shredders we've sold for years which have just a ground discharge that spits it down on the ground. Now, you have to be careful with, the, with these high-speed chippers. Both this one and the Bio 90 have something in common, which is the chute, the input chute here where you put the material in to be chipped is large. So I could stick a four inch branch down here, but let me tell you, it will not chip it. You will stall the motor or slip the belt or something. Um, the chipper shredder combination machines we sell, which are the Bio 80, Bio 100, and Bio 150, kind of naturally limit the size of branch that goes into the chipper chute because they have a chipper uh, uh, entry opening that's only so big and you can't put anything bigger through it than what will fit through the opening. Well because of the way that the high speed chippers are designed in juxtaposition to the chipper shredders, they have to have a big chute. So you just have to use your brain when you're putting things in here that you don't put anything in too big. Maximum allowable diameter on this one is about two inch woody diameter. And if it's hardwood I would even back off of that a little bit. So if you're putting oak in there or something like that you might back down to an inch and a half. Uh, but the nice thing about the high-speed chipper is it chips at two or three times the speed of a chipper shredder. Now, Caravaggi tells me that this one will handle a little more wet material than the Bio 90. The Bio 90 we've tested, and you, we, you can find a video on it as well, does a great job on you know, branches and any kind of woody material. We even tested it with straw and hay, and as long as they're dry, it runs through there fine, blows it right out. But if you had a bunch of wet material like green corn stalks out of your garden or something like that, the Bio 90 doesn't like that. It'll plug up a little bit. Caravaggi tells me this one will handle it, so we're going to run a different segment of the video a little later that shows me shredding green corn stalks in this thing, or chipping them, rather. So for right now we're going to run some branches. I've got a pile of stuff here. Uh, some of these are old branches that I pulled out of the weeds. Some are new oak branches. I just pruned a tree on the fence row over here, so we'll be running some of that through there, too. So. We're going to hook this thing up. Um, I'm going to hook up my BCS 749. Now we've, we've equipped this thing with a quick coupling. This quick coupling does not come included with the, with the uh, implement, but it is available if you have a quick coupling system on your tractor. Now, I, as I say on most of my quick coupling videos, it's always better if you can, if you can plug the tractor onto the implement with the handlebars <laughs> oriented on the implement side. However, because of the height of the chutes on this thing, that's impossible. We've got to mount it with the handlebars over the engine, which is how you're going to be operating this thing. But I'm going to show you a trick, and I, I show this a little bit on the quick coupling video, but I'll show it again here. So what I'll do is roll this thing on here, get it started onto the quick hitch as much as possible. 
and then if it doesn't want to slide all the way in, well, here, let me put it in here so the tractor doesn't roll away while I'm trying this trick. I will just lift this, which takes very little effort since the engine and the handlebars on the other end of the machine are pulling down on that end. I only have to lift about 30 pounds to get this thing off the ground. And I'll use gravity. That is, it, you heard that little thunk. That was its the shipper sliding back into the quick coupling because it's angled backwards. It's going downhill. So it fully bottomed in the quick coupling. Now I can lower my release handle. The release pin did not drop fully, so I'll wiggle this a little bit there when I had to drop fully. So now we're ready to go. I'll pick up my uh, support legs here. You don't really want to drive around with those uh, dropped down, otherwise you're going to make two big grooves in the ground and bend your support leg. Okay, so there's that part of it hooked up. Now the other part of the hookup is this thing. Now this will this would come loose with the chipper shredder. All the Caravaggi products come with uh, something like this if they're a chipper shredder or high-speed chipper. This is What's the most important about this is the red part. This is a Velcro tie. It's just like something you would tie up a computer cable with or whatever. And they've got a little rope lanyard here going onto a little eyelet on the side of the, of the input chute just so you don't lose this thing. But it also gives you kind of a rip cord. The reason that this exists is because with all of the modern safety features on these walk-behind tractors, somebody has to be at the handlebars to hold the safety lever down. Otherwise, the engine will quit or the clutch will disengage depending on what type of tractor you have. But the safety lever has to be run down in order to use the machine. Well, there it is, folks, because I don't think you're gonna to wanna to employ a person to stand here at the handlebars while you're feeding stuff at the front end. So this is for stationary implements where you're not at the handlebars to run the thing. Um, so now that is tied down. I'm going to take this back out of gear so I can actually start the machine and it doesn't drive off. And then we'll commence the chipping. I'll probably reposition it a little to get it closer to the truck. I'm also going to be a good boy and I'm going to wear eye protection. Anytime you're using a chipper shredder of any kind, you should have eye protection. And good gloves. These are actually welding gloves, which are a little more than I need, but this is the only leather gloves I can find right now.
because of the narrowness of the chute, if you've got big spraddled out branches like that, you just have to kind of force them down the chute a little bit. Now obviously, this chute is long enough that you can't really reach all the way to the bottom. Now with my big old long arms, I may be able to actually get to the chipper blade. But you notice after I got it in a little past the elbow, I said, no, I'm not doing that anymore. If you can't, if there's a little clog in there, you know, the branches have come together too much in that funnel shaped chute, just grab another branch and push them on through. And that works fine. So, yeah. I should have parked a little closer to the truck, as you can see, it was barely making it onto the tailgate. But uh, yeah, it's a lot nicer to have to, you know, have something that'll blow it into the back of a truck or a wheelbarrow than having to scoop this stuff off the ground. Did a great job, didn't clog up even with all the leaves in there. But now the real test is whether it'll run clean, green corn stalks through it without plugging. So that'll be our next segment. Hey folks, acid test, or at least the green corn test. Uh, we're going to run some of this through the TRX-50 and see what happens. This is my now spent corn patch, or at least this half of the corn patch is spent. And I'm going to just blow it back into the corn. Now, uh, I want to point out that in most chipper shredders, like chipper shredder combination machines, if you're running a bunch of green pulpy material through there like this, like old tomato vines and things like this, or wet leaves, anything with a lot of moisture in it, you can always keep it from plugging by running some dry material through it occasionally. So if, it's, if, it's, if you notice the chute starting to plug, you just run a dry branch through there and the abrasive nature of that dry material will kind of clean it out. So we're going to see how long this goes before it plugs up with green corn stalks. This is kind of the, the test. Thanks for watching.